Pigs in the Parlor, Chapter 4. The Value of Deliverance. The process of expelling demons is called deliverance. Come back to the one Sorry about that. All right, deliverance is not a panacea or a cure-all, yet it is an important part of what God is doing in relationship to the current revival in the church. Some expect too much from deliverance and others too little. We honestly need to find out what part deliverance can play in each of our lives and receive whatever benefit it offers. Those whom God has placed in the forefront of the deliverance ministry do not have to go out looking for prospects. It is evident that God is placing a desire for purity in the hearts of his people everywhere. I am continually astonished at how many pe persons come forward asking for this ministry. I am even more amazed at how many come forward not knowing exactly what to expect. They come because they are already reaching out to God. They are believers who want to continue in spiritual growth and realize that every hindrance to spiritual development must be eliminated. The church is the bride of Christ, and Christ is coming for his bride. The scripture declares that his bride must be cleansed. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Deliverance is an essential part of the preparation of the bride of Christ, getting rid of spots and wrinkles. Since the church for which Christ is coming is to be holy and without blemish, we must agree that unclean spirits must be purged from our lives. Is this cleansing to be sought to be a sovereign act of the Lord, or does it involve responsibility on the part of the believer? Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. This verse emphasizes human responsibility. It is up to us to make ourselves ready for the coming of the Lord. Some seem to be waiting for the Lord's coming as a time when great change will automatically take place, when all their deficiencies will instantly and miraculously be remedied. The scripture does say, We shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. But this refers only to our mortal bodies becoming immortal. We must avoid reading too much into this passage. Ephesians verses, The Ephesian verses quoted above state that the bride is cleansed by the washing of, the, of water by the word. In one sense, we do our own washing, but in another sense, the bridegroom does it by, by providing the water, the word. Everyone knows that, the bride, that a bride spends considerable time before a mirror in preparation of herself for her bridegroom. The word of God is that mirror before which we stand in our time of preparation. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deed. When Esther was being prepared as a bride for her king, she went through a time of preparation. The scripture tells us that she went through a whole year of purifying the flesh. Six months were spent in the application of oil and six months with sweet odors or spices. The king provided her with all that she needed. These things speak to us symbolically. Our king has provided us, has provided the means whereby we are to purify our flesh. Oil represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We are to be anointed with the Spirit's power. The spices used by Esther represents the fruit of the Spirit. Today, there, there is a fresh and strong emphasis upon the gifts and fruit of the Holy Spirit. The bride is undergoing her preparation. But we all, with open face, beholding as a glass the glory of the Lord, 
are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 Demons are enemies of the gifts and fruits of the Spirit. They can keep them from coming forth in a Christian's life and thereby hinder the believer in his preparation for his Lord's coming. This is why deliverance is a vital part of the preparation of the bride which is taking place today. For example, one of the gifts of the Spirit is prophecy. The scripture says, Let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Romans 12, 6. The demon of doubt or unbelief can block the flow of faith and thereby block the flow of prophecy. The gift of prophecy can come forth in some persons only after the hindering spirits to their faith are dealt with. This is true of, of other gifts as well. It has been discovered that some persons who have asked for the baptism of the Holy Spirit cannot speak in tongues and others are limited to a few words. This is often caused by a demonic interference. In many cases, the person has been involved in occult practices. It may be something as seemingly harmless as having played with a Ouija board. But such involvement in the occult, no matter whether done out of ignorance or knowingly, will open the door for demonic oppression and hindrance to the gifts of the Spirit. It is important to rid oneself of everything that has been invited in through the occult realm. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to you and call to your remembrance every door that has been opened by yourself or others through the course of your life. The fruit of the Spirit is a special target for the enemy. The first and principal fruit is love. Love is something to be received as well as to be given forth. The demon of resentment can defeat love in a person's life. Many persons cannot understand why they are unable to love others as they ought. Such a problem is a strong indication of the presence of a demon spirit of resentment or unforgiveness. Resentment usually invites in other demons such as bitterness, hatred, and anger. Love may also be hindered by a spirit of rejection. This spirit is very common and is often to be found as the strong or ruling spirit within an individual. Rejection has an opportunity to enter when a demon is not loved as a child. Parents can easily open the door for a spirit of rejection in their child by failure to give that child proper love. When rejection is strong, it keeps the person from receiving the love extended by others. It also prevents that person from giving love to others. The demon of rejection must be cast out before the person can mature in Christian love. If Satan can succeed in making the Christian feel a stigma attached to having, a de having demons, he may prevent that Christian from seeking deliverance. While we cannot put all the blame on Satan and his demons for our problems, we are finding that we can blame them for much more than we once thought. In fact, some Christians have not yet learned that demons are responsible for any of their problems. We will learn that they do invade our lives we, when we learn that they do invade our lives, then we should be in earnest about getting rid of them. Many Christians today are finding real help through deliverance. Problems that could not be solved through known avenues of help are now being solved through deliverance. It makes us wonder why we have been so long in seeing these truths in God's word. It makes us wonder why we have been so long in seeing these truths in God's word.